Hey, what's up everyone? We are here at the Desert Botanical Gardens in Phoenix, Arizona. Checking it out, lots of cool cactuses, succulents, things like that. Uh, there's also, they're also featuring a Japanese sculpture artist, sculpture artist. Uh, which is pretty sculptor. cool too. I sculptor. A sculptor. Uh, sculptor. 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 But anyway, here's some video from that. So the name of the artist is uh, June Kaneko. He uh, has all these sculptures here. It's pretty cool. There's some in the entrance, just throughout the uh, the garden. But. I've been known to do stuff like, I uh, know I could eat. Or the plants or need one off of you, the, the people with the blue aprons on the inside would be able to help you. Alright, thank you. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. Oh, check yourself. I keep typing butterflies. Oh, wow. <laughs> she worked in the. Uh, they had a section where it was like this time. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> birds, all the parrots mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And you just see them yeah. all over here. Oh, wow. That's one What is the season? When you say you get them late in the season, well, what? in our season, Your because season? We, we close Mother's Day. Okay.
No, we still have gas, but as you come into the front entry, it's just going to be right there. Thank you so much. You get to pay the bonuses on its own. I'm going to show you my picture, but for what? Is this something that we can print?
not fertilizing three times a year? With the new schedule? The schedule? Well, the new schedule, the science, they've done lots of science on it. And so we're not, like, we're not, um, so we used to do Valentine's Day, Memorial Day, and Labor Day. And they said that when you do it, like Labor Day, you're going to get the thicker skin. So now we have to fertilize before that. So you fertilize in July. So they have um, the garden over here. Is that a boy? Is he? Hey, good chair.
Another sculpture there, I think. This is, these cactuses can live hundreds of years. Can I go grab one like this? I don't think so. <laughs> Here you go. Maybe you can have something like that. Not these two, okay? There are no hummingbirds in Asia, Africa, or Europe. They're only found here in the United, in the Americas. Wow. The hummingbirds, okay? Now, they like to build a nest here in the top of a mesquite tree, which we're underneath right now. Up high, and use a lot of camouflage material. And this is what their nest looks like. And you see the small little eggs? Okay. Do you see it there? Aww. Okay. Now, to hold that nest together and allow it to expand as the babies grow, they use spider webs. Everywhere they have to have spider webs or you'll never keep hummingbirds around. So don't clean up your backyard too. Much. Okay? <laughs> we actually had to introduce spiders down in Tucson to bird sanctuary because the nest kept falling apart. They wouldn't stay. Okay? Now, our state bird is the cactus wren, which I just had right I over here a second. Back there a yeah. yeah. Up in this tree here. Okay. Now this is what I call a high maintenance female. You guys want to hear this? <laughs> First off, she wants her nest built in a choya bush, very prickly, very dangerous. Right behind you there, the one behind that tree. I don't know. There's no one here. Big ones. Lots of prickly. Oh yeah, rabbits. Yep. Now, I told you about her wanting to build a nest in a choya bush. Also, she has to have a roof over her head. Okay? That's the cactus. Rant. And thirdly, as she's sitting on those multicolored salmon and tangerine colored Aren't eggs, those cute? she expects the male to build a second or a third nest for her to decide which one she wants to live in after she's hatched these eggs. That's your High maintenance female. <laughs> now, the cur the cur bill thrasher also builds a nest in a choya bush, but he does all the heavy lifting, all the thorns and everything. But you can guess who does the interior design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is her nest, her egg. Excuse me. It's a little blue egg, which you think would be a robin's egg, except mm -hmm. it's got some red specks on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your cur. Here, even though this is a bigger bird, the, the eggs are smaller. Okay. And then what you see running around the ground all the time are your gambrel quails. Okay. Of the 50 types of birds we have here in the garden, this is the only ones that mate for life. So they're going to be like a swan or a penguin. Okay. 
And we taxpayers paid for a study that said the bigger the plume, the more attractive they are to the opposite sex. Okay. <laughs> sort of reminds you of a Donald Trump joke, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, she's very intelligent. She can sense whether or not there's going to be enough moisture in order to support the babies because it means the moisture will provide the for the insects. If it's a really dry season, she'll go a whole year without laying an egg. Hmm. But when she does lay eggs, she lays this speckled egg here. That's quite large. Quite large. She'll lay one of those every day for 10 or 12 days in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Then she'll gather them together in the dirt underneath a bush someplace, and the male and the female will alternate sitting on them until they all hatch, surprisingly at the same time. Hmm. And then they're off and running, chasing after insects. They never go back to the nest again. Wow. Okay? And then we're to the Hilo woodpecker. Okay? If you look behind you, you'll see some, either there or over there, you'll see swarms with holes in them. Okay, that Hilo woodpecker, the male, this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay? The Hilo woodpecker will go up high, safe from predators. He'll take two days to dig out all the fleshy material and just throw it to the ground. Then he'll go back to the original swarm and he'll wait. In six weeks, that swirl will scab up. He protect himself from moisture loss, so it doesn't hurt the swirl. Wow. Then he'll invite the female back. Now, they're not like the gamble quails. They didn't mate for life, so it may require some flowers, a little chocolate, maybe violin music, <laughs> but he's successful. <laughs> She'll lay the simple little white egg, two to four of them, at the very base of the uh, boot, as the Indians call it. No nesting material, just playing in there. The little ones will be raised and gone, and then the adults, after about one year, for reasons we don't understand, will go pick on another swirl someplace and abandon the nest. That's when it gets interesting. Because you get bats, owls, field mice, That'll come and, and other birds there. will move in. Okay, that's why they call it a living hotel. <laughs> okay? Wow. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Wasn't too corny, was that? Just <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for other
Oh, he's got a thing in his eye. Like a cactus thing? It's fucking the wrong cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's eat, they're eating the... This is the the luxury hut, the suite. Is there any snakes in there? I'm pretty sure there is. I think I'm looking at it. It's cool though.